Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lee's R&D session number three. Now, this is an introductory video so that Lee can tell both you guys and myself what exactly we're going to be covering in this session because I'm just as much in the dark as you guys are. So, Lee, what do you have lined up for this session? Okay, are you ready for this? I'm ready I mean, for this. It is mind-blowing. We will be doing stuff. All right, I expected that. So, so far, we are on target. Okay, good, good. So, darn, I thought I was going to blow your mind with that. No, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing some cleanup work. So we've done quite a bit of work in the last two sessions, but this is R&D, and my project is constantly evolving, and there's been some things that have changed, even from the completion of the second session of R&D videos to where I am right now. Right. But what I want to do is take this, um, you know, next uh, – probably anywhere from 15 to 20 videos and get this project to the point where we're ready to move forward with it as far as starting to bring in sculpting tools, looking at uh, moving towards collaborative uh, – a, a collaborative workflow with sculpting out the terrain mm -hmm. and also get the groundwork laid in for multi-threading. And another big thing that I really, really want to do is – finally get rid of all the magic numbers. But I want to uh, do that in such a way that we also implement another system that allows us to make a configuration file, an any e file. So we can const or constantly add more and more variables into that any e file, and you'll be able to tweak out the terrain demo without having to go in and remember where a certain values are kept inside the code itself. So it'll give you one place that all your tweakable uh, values will be held so you can modify those in the future. Okay. The other thing that I want to do is um, go in, modify the way that we're dealing with the height map. Right now we've got a, uh, a height map of the UK, and then we have a noise map, which I've – conveniently named height map. <laughs> so this is also part of the uh, evolution, but it's also kind of confusing. What I want to do is go back into Photoshop and show everyone how we can combine our noise map or detail map in the same file with our height map and also set it up so we've got the ability of having three different uh, noise maps if you want to have them. You can use uh, – I'll show you how we can go and use no, no noise maps or detail maps or you could use one, two or all three if you want or you could also use the same uh, texture for all three of the noise maps if you want. And we'll go through that in a future video. Okay. This will just keep um, the number of uh, assets down and it's kind of nice to have – everything that you need to generate your terrain inside of a single file. Right. Okay. Af after we go through that, I want to revisit the terrain generator itself. There are several things that we have to change to support this new type of file um, structure for bringing in the height data. And we also need to do um, quite a bit of cleanup work to make it thread friendly. There are several things that are in it right now that leverage on the Unity's API calls, which will not work in Thread. So we're going to have to go through the uh, train generator and recode some sections of it so that it will work in a threaded environment. All right. A along with doing that, we're finally going to get back and fix a, uh, uh, an error that I had made leaving out um, part of the adaptive iteration in our loop or, or iteration in adaptive iteration in our loop that handles smoothing of the heights. So we're going to go back, we're going to fix that, and we're also going to tweak out the uh, um, algorithm that we're using for calculating out the, uh, the heights itself, which will give us a more realistic transition from sea level into uh, um, the altitudes of our map. So we can control how compressed or uncompressed uh, that transition is. So we should end up with some nicer looking beaches? Yes. Cool. Well, actually, some tighter looking beaches instead of having a beach that's five miles long. Or oh, wide. I see. I see. So we'll be able to bring the uh, 
terrain, the hilly terrain, a lot closer to the water with this. So can I, so, uh, well, at that point, will I be able to talk you into just throwing some water in too so you, we can get a better sense of, you know, beaches and water? Well, there's a reason why I said it's going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 videos. Gotcha. So, you know, <laughs> you know, we might be adding some more videos because as, as we go on and Evelyn, Jason and Will will go, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we do this? Well, and then we'll you know. <laughs> You know, we're just kicked yeah. back having a good time because, again, you know, all these R&D videos, we're all MMO videos. They're supposed to be like that, relaxed, and we can have a good time. It's not like we're setting out to do some sort of standard uh, syllabus layout slash educational training piece, though so far all of the videos have, for the most part, been that way. But, you know, so, yeah, we can have a good time and just add stuff in if we see a place where we can add that stuff. Right. Well, yeah, it wouldn't be too hard. We can put in some water. It depends on what you want to look for, though. If you want just a plane that we color blue to represent water, or if you want the simple water that everybody can use, or if we just go all out and implement the uh, the pro water. Ooh. Well, we so could implement pro. I mean, I know there's benefits and things that we have to take into consideration. But at the end of the day, we've already said we have Pro. We can use Pro for those that are using Simple. That's It's up to them to find their workarounds. And you can talk about what workarounds they could look for and use. Right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how I feel when we get there. We'll <laughs> probably be about 7 o'clock in the morning by the time we get to that point. Yeah, well, we'll surprise me. So um, – uh, is that about it, or you got anything else you want to? No, I've got more stuff. Oh, I've what got else? all kinds. This, this is why this is a whole session, or uh, a, a whole, whole new, new session. session of a session uh, okay. itself, because we've got lots of stuff to cover. The other thing that I want to do um, is implement a frame uh, per second counter, FPS counter. Okay. So I'll um, show you a basic implementation of how we can calculate the uh, frames per second, mm -hmm. and then. Since we're going to be calculating the frames uh, per second, it would be helpful to have some sort of simple uh, debug console that we can display in the lower left-hand side console of the or screen. Just a console or just um, well, text on the screen? It's going to be, well, it's going to be a display window. It's not going to be a console that you can type into yet. Okay. Um, so would you? At, at some point, we'll probably evolve to that, but we won't be doing that here. Okay. So... And uh, depending on if you have any additions as we go along, that's pretty much what I have planned for this session of videos. All right. It sounds fantastic. Well, with that, let's go ahead and wrap up the introduction and get going. Thanks a lot, everyone.